to dive in the sea. For about 150 years, there was only one way. Hard hat, we call it. Your head is imprisoned in a heavy helmet. Your life depends on a tow line and an airline to the top. Like the horse-drawn carriage, hard hats have given way to a much better device. Compressed air lungs for skin diving. The kind that I use. But some divers are too stubborn to give up the old method. And the rivalry between hard hats and skin divers is always good for a joke. But it was no joke when it became a matter of life and death. That fine August day found me in a small Latin American port. Only the day before, I had received an air ticket and a mysterious telegram. It seemed that a skillful diver was needed for an unusual job. Nothing more was explained. Out in the harbor, I could see divers at work salvaging a jet. Hard hats. Made me wonder why I was needed here, too. straight to the hotel. The Monaco Hotel in Santa Pueblo had seen better times. And so had the desk clerk. Professor Cathcart, please. Uh, who shall I say is calling? Mike Nelson. Mike who? Nelson. Mike Nelson. Mike Nelson? Well, well, what do you know? Kel Saunders. Uh, you must have been one of those hard hats that I saw diving out there today, huh? Hey, you know a better way to die? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. Still breathing through your mouth. Once a hard hat, always a hard hat. <laughs> Did you come down here to put me out of business with that diving lung of yours? Uh, now, you know I wouldn't step on a hard hat's toes. I might hurt my little uh, rubber fins and those big lead boots of yours. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what did bring you all the way down here? I might ask you the same question. They wanted a hard hat diver, so they got the best. Who's they? The local government. El Presidente Verdes. We salvaged a jet plane for him that one of his pilots had to ditch. Ah, uh, that's what you were doing out there, huh? Well, did you finish the job? Yeah, but they got a lot more jobs for me down here. Oh, uh, you better hurry him up. Down here they change governments faster than it takes you to screw on that diving helmet. Well, uh, maybe so, but my customers pay in advance. How about yours? Mr. Nelson? Ah, uh, know that a minute. Uh, room 211, sir. I see you, Cal, huh? Right. I'll uh, bet you one of these you can't tell me who Mr. Nelson went up to see. I do not gamble, sir. Oh, not even for higher stakes? Only when I am sure that I can win. Uh, he went to see uh, Professor Katkar. Well, tell me more. That's all. Uh, Professor Roland Katkar, Smithsonian Institute, Washington, D.C. It's supposed to be lying on the bottom right in this area here. Uh, it seems pretty close to shore not to have been noticed before this, don't you think? How reliable was your uh, source of information? Quite reliable. I got it from a local fisherman. I'll have him take us out to the spot. I just don't see how a large object like a submarine could remain down there unnoticed for over 12 years. Well, on the contrary, a submarine is more likely to remain unnoticed than a regular vessel. Due to its slick, fish-like shape. After a short while, a crust of algae and such could have camouflaged the hull beyond recognition. Why'd well, your fisherman happen to spot it then? From air bubbles on the surface. Air bubbles? Yes, he took me out there. I saw them myself. After all these years? Well, it's quite possible. Now, when it sunk, some of its compartments remained airtight. 
Years of slow corrosion could have eaten through the armor plating, starting gradual seepage. For an archaeologist, you seem to be unusually well-versed in uh, seafaring science. Well, research, my boy, research. You know, since this was completely out of my line, I secured every bit of data and information I could lay my hands on. Through our local embassy, including your ability, you came well recommended as the most versatile man for the job. Well, thank you, Professor Cathcart, but it seems to me that you want a salvage operator, not a, not a skin diver. Oh, you're not going to salvage a boat. You're going to unlock a door to history. Well, it'll take heavy equipment to, uh, to dismantle that sub. We leave the scrap iron for someone else. All I'm after are its contents. Now, I'm sure you can handle the equipment it takes to get inside of one of these. Well, I got a drill and a torch. Yeah, I could get inside of it. Mm -hmm. Now, my guess is that for this particular mission, the German top brass utilized something like this long range, 750 tonner. Utilized? Well, it couldn't have been a combat mission. Not in this region. However, its last whereabouts does coincide with some of the confiscated reports of the German Admiralty at the end of World War II and indicates it to have been a vital and top-secret mission. Oh, wait a minute, you don't mean to tell me that uh, you expect to find Hitler's body in that sub? Well, I can't tell you what you'll find. It may be anything. From important historic documents to the remains of top-ranking Nazi fugitives or just a wild goose chase. That's why I sent for you. I can only guarantee your expenses until we see what we'll find below. I've often wondered what that last trump was that Hitler had up his sleeve. Well, is it a deal? The next morning, Professor Cathcart and I set out for the spot with the bubbles. Pedro, the fisherman who found the place, came along as our guide. Oh, that's salvage boat. There were a couple of hard hats diving over there. Hard hats? Yeah. Oh, that's the conventional deep sea diving, you know, with the, uh, the big helmet, the uh, heavy lead boots, and the, uh, and the air hose. Yes. Cumbersome, isn't it? I became suspicious when I couldn't see Cal Saunders and his friend working anywhere in the harbor. And I didn't trust those two any farther than I could throw them. And you can't throw a hard hat very far. You're sure that you're the only one that uh, Pedro's been peddling his U-boat information to? Oh, certainly. Why shouldn't I be? I guess the best way to find out is to get there as fast as possible. Let's go, Pedro, huh? See, si, senor. salvage law of first come first served time was of the essence and as in the gold infested hills of the old west the sea would only unlock its treasures to those that knew exactly where to look for them the question was are you alone in that knowledge senor the bubbles Well, here's open, huh? The water was very murky as I swam down, but the bubbles guided me. Then I saw it. The professor was right. It was a submarine. Looked just like the type that he expected to. its origin fitted the pattern of the professor's speculations and what this huge war-weary time capsule held inside would tell the rest of the story well if 
Professor? Nothing. You got yourself a sub. The right one? On the button. What about the bubbles? The air bubbles? Just like you said. Seepage from one of the undamaged compartments. Well, then we're still in time. We'll soon find out. I'm hoping that the uh, control room under the conning tower may be completely intact and sealed there tight. But I wouldn't dare to try to get inside of it through its outside hatch. Why? There's no telling what kind of gases may have accumulated inside over the years. A sudden release of pressure could cause such a vacuum that it would flood the compartment instantly and destroy everything. Is there a way to get inside the control room with a minimum of damage? Yeah. I'll show you what I got in mind. You got a piece of paper and pencil? See, I want to get into uh, the control room through the uh, adjoining compartment, the one that's causing all the bubbles. Now. That's the sub, supposedly. There's the control room. Running tower. This is the adjoining compartment. It sounds like it's uh, half filled with water due to its seepage. Now, if I can cut into this uh, adjoining compartment beneath this inside water level, I won't release this air that's still uh, caught up here under the ceiling. Once I get up here in this adjoining compartment where this air is, it'll be a cinch just to cut a dry hole into the control room. That's ingenious. <laughs> Elementary. Well, we'll see now if it works. I went down again. This time I brought my hand drill. It has a titanium bit that can drill through anything. We had a torch with us too, but I was afraid to use it. The danger of explosion would be too great. besides mine. When I looked around, I found myself trapped and realized that my suspicions had been justified. They tried to grab me, but their hard hat rigs were so awkward that I slipped out. I went up to see what was really going on. It didn't take long to realize that we were double-crossed. Senor Nelson? You are under arrest. It seemed that we had been caught off guard in a well-organized surprise maneuver, below as well as above the water. I'm Colonel Perez, the military police. You are under arrest by the power invested in me by President Verdes. For what reason am I under arrest? Have you got a permit? I got a passport. Not a passport, a permit. Well, what do I need a permit for? To dive in these waters. To dive? I never heard of such a thing. The sea is free in international territory. Not this close to shore, my friend. You are within our boundaries. How do I get a permit? From the President Verdes himself. Slowly the pieces began to fall in place and fit. Kel Saunders' curiosity piqued by my presence down here, 
he had set out to do some snooping. And tating us from a respectable distance, he arrived well prepared to move in by pulling some powerful strings with his local big shot friends. Just what do they expect to find? What they find is none of your concern. It will belong to the state. That is a matter of debate. We'll take it up with the American consul. Pedro, take us back to shore. Perhaps you did not understand me, senor. You are going nowhere. Until I say so. You are still under arrest. What makes you so sure we're going to find gold down in that sub? You don't think a big shot scientist will be traveling all the way down here looking for seashells, do you? One of those German subs must be loaded to the hilt with gold. You know, back in the days when Nazi high brass saw the handwriting on the wall and took a powder down here. You don't say. Hey, Joe, hook up that acetylene torch. Now, wait a minute. We better feel our way around on there first with a drill like Nelson did. What for? We ain't got all day. Uh, he must have had a reason for starting out that way. Sure. He ain't got first-class equipment like we got. I don't know. We'll take both. You take the drill, I'll take the torch. Okay. Perhaps if they find nothing of great material value, we can still come to terms with them. That's the way they're going about it. You better tell them not to take that torch down there. What they do is none of your concerns. There's bound to be gas in that sub's hull. A torch could cause an explosion. There are no fools. They've done bigger stuff than you for the president. You better tell them not to take that torch hey, down there. Don't! Did you hear what I said? Now listen, you interfere again, I'll have you thrown in jail. American counsel or not. There was nothing to do but let these two pirates take what we'd found. They could pull strings on land, but they looked pretty clumsy in the water to me. Cal mistook my water level mark for a starting point to drill. But his cohort wasn't happy with the slow procedure and kept on looking for shortcuts. I keep pulling on his shirt to break. Hang on, I got mine coming in right now. All right. I jumped in and started to dive, but I saw one of the hard hats coming up. I swam over to find out what had happened. Cal Saunders. Huh? I don't know. He's down there someplace. I don't think I can get to him. But you can. Will you? The vacuum had sucked him into the sub. He didn't seem to be injured, but he was stunned and needed help to get out. Thanks to his unbroken air supply, he seemed to be otherwise intact.
trip alone. So I figured I'd stay behind and try at least to save the pieces. Maybe some of those last rare pieces of Hitler's Third Reich. This small forward compartment must have served as part of the crew's sleeping quarters and torpedo storage. The torpedoes were gone. This was the hatch that led to what I had hoped to be the hermetically sealed control room. Holding in its time-arrested capsule the secrets that Cathcart wished to contribute to history. With this small adjoining section flooded, I could no longer figure on entering a dry control room. Only by letting in the water gradually, I hoped not to disturb the condition of whatever I would find beyond. A small hole drilled into the hatch would act as a slow seepage vent. Letting the water seep through like this was like filling a bathtub through a straw. It wouldn't be much longer before I'd run out of oxygen. It looked like my tiny floodgate had done its job, and I could finally enter. The cabin's airtight seal, combined with the accumulated gases, had acted as a natural preservative in all elements within this compartment. But strangely enough, they were only the hermetically embalmed remains of one single man. He might have been the radio operator or even the commander. If Hitler or any other dignitaries had once been their passengers, they were no longer to be found. And with them might have gone whatever material things they had required, such as gold. But since only closely guarded secrets make history, I guess this to be their natural hiding place. Documents of ink and water can dilute it. A safely kept secret must be a dry secret, as it would be in this locked box. I opened the cabinet to disconnect the safe from it. At 60 feet, it isn't easy to work. But my equipment was light, my tools efficient. They have stopped for 10 minutes. I know. You and your politics. If it hadn't been for you and those hard-hatted cutthroats, he'd never gotten himself into this mess. What did you expect to find down below? Gold? Why not? Mike! There's all kinds of gold. Here's yours. A rope. There's a small safe tied at the end of it. Who knows what's inside of it? Maybe chuck full of history. Well, go on, pull it up. Professor Cathcart pulled up his treasure to deliver it to the Smithsonian Institute in Washington. It gave me a good feeling to know that skin diving had made a contribution to the study of history. And uh, maybe a lesson to a couple of hard hats, too. Back next week at this same time with another sea hunt story. Plan to be with us again, huh? Plan to be with us again, huh?